On the docket tonight, the doomsday couple, Lori Vallow Daybell, Chad Daybell, especially Lori Vallow Daybell. You know she's being represented by defense attorney Mark Means. And uh, right now she has been deemed not competent to stand trial. So we are waiting uh, for her to be deemed competent so she can get back on the docket with her case. But tonight here on Court TV, we have exclusive breaking news. And joining us for that breaking news, Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who has the exclusive for us tonight. Chanley, what can you tell us? Mark Means has filed a new explosive motion, Benny, with rather troubling allegations, if true. And here is how it starts. It says, on or about October 15th, I, Mark Means, met with defendant Mrs. Bay Mrs. Daybell in person at the committed site. She's under commitment, uh, incompetent to stand trial currently. Now, this is controlled by the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare. During this discussion, he says, it was brought to my attention of unethical and possible illegal activity, discussions, disclosures, and manipulation of the incompetent defendant. Now, Vinny, here is the story that this motion tells. It says that Lori is being treated by a clinician there at the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare, and that on October 5th, she and this clinician watched the change of venue hearing for Chad Daybell, her husband. Now, during that hearing, this clinician recommended that Lori contact the LDS Church Headquarters legal counsel to discuss her case and to possibly obtain new legal counsel. Now, this clinician provided the phone number and it was Lori's homework, part of her treatment to make this call. And she did. So this motion says that Lori wouldn't have called this other legal counsel on her own without the prodding of the uh, Department of Health and Welfare employee. And Lori stated repeatedly she didn't want to do this call. She felt forced and manipulated according to this motion by a person in a position of authority. So Lori called this LDS headquarters, Vinny, and spoke with LDS legal counsel. And his name is Daniel S. McConkey. She told him that uh, well, basically everything about her case, according to this motion, it says that Lori made Brady violation disclosures under the guise that the church was her friend and there to assist her in both the temporal and spiritual matters related to her criminal case. And that Lori made disclosures that she would not have made without this attorney, Mr. McConkie's assurances that he knew every detail of her case. So it goes on to talk about there was no exposure of a conflict of interest by McConkie, that this conversation was not protected by attorney-client privilege, and that Lori believed she would be protected by the rules of the spiritual world. So this is the kicker of this motion. Now, he said he would get back to Lori, this attorney from the LDS Church, but he didn't. And according to this motion, Vinny, he called Rob Wood, the prosecutor, on Lori Vallow's murder case to discuss this matter and disclose Lori's statements to Rob Wood. And then later, Rob Wood called Lori's defense attorney and revealed that Lori only told Mr. McConkie that she wanted a new appointed public defender. Well, that's not according to this motion. In fact, here is the overall allegation. Let's put it up on the screen. It says, this motion alleges manipulation of an incompetent defendant. It is well documented that her obsession with the LDS church and corporation has made her unrealistic beliefs appear to have been purposefully used against the defendant to engage in acts against her own self-interest and without her attorney. Mark means many. Wow, this is this is could be extremely explosive. So, is Mark Means alleging some sort of um, I don't know that they're they're working together? This this um, person from the Department of Health and Welfare, this clinician, is working with the LDS and the prosecutor. Like, there's some sort of conspiracy by the three of them working together. 
he flat out says that in this motion. In fact, I highlighted that portion of it. Let's put that on the screen. It says, it strains credulity to ignore the facts that the LDS Church Incorporation and its legal counsels are possibly involved or working with the state prosecution, the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare, at least in this incident, to manipulate the defendant to be forced into statements against her interests. These behaviors are clearly unethical, it says, and if true, possibly legal activities to undermine her constitutional rights. This motion goes on Vinny, to demand a, a detailed and exhaustive investigation and to expose, quote, nefarious activities. This uh, uh, Mark Means wants a hearing. He wants all of these parties subpoenaed, brought before this court for a hearing to get to the bottom of it. Chanley Painter uh, breaking some explosive uh, news tonight. Let me do this. Let me bring in our think tank, get a little reaction, and, and see if they're uh, looking at this the same way I am. Nima Romani, you're the prosecutor, right? Former federal prosecutor. Um, this is very strange what happened here. You've got a, a, a Lori Valdebel not competent to stand trial and getting some advice from the clinician to call an attorney, and that attorney has a conversation with her, and then attorney then says the, the nature, whatever was exchanged in that in the conversation, then gives it to the prosecutor? That didn't sound right. It's not right, but there's no Brady violation here. There's no constitutional violation. I love how defense attorneys like to go on the offense, but let's say, let's tell everyone what Brady is. Brady is a prosecutor's obligation to turn over exculpatory evidence to the defense. There's nothing here that's exculpatory. You have a criminal defendant who is unwell, incompetent temporarily to stand trial, who has a conversation with the clinician. The clinician shouldn't be giving legal advice. He or she's working well, for the Isn't part state. of the problem here, though, Nima, that like the clinician works for the Department of Health and Welfare. She is locked in there with, and this person is, is, is in charge of her and is treating her. Um, it's not like she's voluntarily going to this person. And that, to me, that's where this gets very problematic. Well, no question. But when you're talking about the state of Idaho, the clinician may have done something improper, but that's so far removed from the prosecutor. The prosecutor shouldn't be communicating with a represented party. That's the ethical issue here. And even if you're communicating through an LDS attorney or through some other means, what you got to do is when you get that phone call and say, no, 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 this is someone who's represented. I shouldn't be talking to her. That's your obligation as any attorney, but especially a prosecutor. So you say, listen, I can't talk to you without your attorney present. And it's just that simple. There's nothing exculpatory here. There's no reason that this hearing should go forward. Ultimately, Means is just upset because he has a client who is clearly unwell and has all sorts of issues, and she wants a new attorney. And Kirk, she has a right to hire a new attorney. Kirk Nurmi, let me ask you, if in fact she revealed factual details of what happened to those, those two beautiful children, if she revealed those factual details to this LDS attorney, and he then tells the prosecutor, uh, do, do we have to take the prosecutor's word that nothing was told to him? Or, or should the judge investigate to find out? The judge certainly should investigate to find out. And I'm, I disagree strongly with Neem in terms of whitewashing this and saying, well, heck, there's no Brady violation. We don't know. That's what the inquiry's for. But we certainly know that this LDS attorney had a conversation with Mr. Wood. That's why Mr. Wood called Mr. Mean. And we certainly know that Lori Vallow called this attorney. That's what instigated the whole thing. So there's a lot of truths here that are known. So what she said that would, if, if she disclosed, talked about where the bodies went, anything about the case, that would be a Brady violation. And Mr. Woods might find himself very well disqualified to prosecute this case because he might have made himself a witness. The other consideration here, Vinny, that hasn't been brought up yet is the death penalty. Keep in mind now the specter of the death penalty looms over this case. Now we have mental health workers, we know mental health is a big part of mitigation, that have interfered with the process, that have polluted that process. And, you know, that too is a Brady violation because that affects her right to fight for her life. So there's so much going on here. Bravo to Mr. Means for bringing this up because this, you know, whether regardless of what you think of Lori Vallow, this stinks. Okay. Um, we're going to continue to follow these developments. We're just learning this tonight exclusively here on Court TV. Thanks to Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter breaking the news. Uh, don't go away, folks. We've got uh, to get to our 13th tour question next. A lot of news tonight.